Jeder von der Welt hier. Yeah. First time. Download it and see what happens. Just, uh, I was just trying to figure it out as I was going along. I just uh, I couldn't. I was trying to get in the groove kind of thing, but you know, needless to say, it was it's the latest uh, um, download I put onto my uh, Boss Loop Station pedal to have a little backing jam because you know, let's face it, I've been I've been missing jamming and playing and missing my band basically so um yeah the uh i had my uh i pulled my my one of my buddy's cds out not to segue into anything it just happened to be a coincidence um <clears throat> What I do is I put a uh, I put a CD in my car and as I'm going back and forth to the gym I'll play it and uh, I was just looking at which one am I going to grab now and I couldn't decide so I grabbed them both because they're both from a, a you know a real good friend of mine um, again uh, one of uh, Long Island's top three bass players a, uh, a well-known professional musician. Um, <clears throat> Stephen Palmer, Long Island, New York. So yeah, this was the uh, album that they 
sent him to London, England to record at the Abbey Lane, Abbey, the Beatles studio. Sorry, I just draw a blank sometimes. Abbey Rhodes studio. So yeah, they sent him. That's actually the door, him by the door of the studio on the cover there. So that's my, my buddy Steve. Um, yeah, this was his band, Wounded. So this is another great CD. I don't even know if you can get these. You know, these came right from his hands. Um, this one here, real quick. Um, they got signed by Sony, sent to Canada, where the Bad Naked Ladies and Celine Dion records all their stuff. And they, they made this album, and the 11 great songs on it. Every song is a hit on here. You could play it on any station, any music station. And uh, when he came back, you know, he handed it to me. And I listened to it. I was like, wow, this is great stuff. And, you know, I'm sure I wasn't the only one telling them that, that they went back to the studio. Sorry, they went back to... Uh, um, Sony with the, a lawyer and wanted to get out of that that deal and sign a new contract which I thought didn't make sense to me because you know I asked him I says why did you do that uh, in short Sony just wound up dropping them and I asked him why would you why would you throw a monkey wrench in it and he says because we have we wanted a five album deal like we asked for before and um, now that we, we can show what we can do, we thought we'd get it. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, why do you want a five album deal? He said, I have, we have five albums worth of material. I'm like, that's all fine and well, but see how the first album goes, the first CD. I said, because if that takes off like I think it will, because we had a couple of Long Island bands that made it big, you know, um, then you could write, you know, a check for the next one. He says, if you're locked into a, a five album deal, you're locked into a five album deal. And then when you want more money, because this CD became a hit and uh, you become popular, he says, you know, locked into a, a contract. So it didn't make sense to me. Just run with the first album. The album does well, which I'm sure would have. Um, then you go back and sign for another album. Don't lock yourself into more than one album. Because uh, it's great for a band that may not have five good albums in them. There's a lot of bands that, for the most part, you get either one, two, three great albums from a band, and then that's it. They're dried up. So why take that chance? But, you know, so that one failed. And because he had a studio in his house, his whole house was a studio. Um, they, and he had a lot of heavy hitters come into his house. Um, I used to train him in, in martial arts. That's how we became good friends. I've known him man, since the 80s. <clears throat> and um, I used to, used to also, he went to, he went to, at one time he went to one of my, my schools. Um, I had my dojo shirt on when I walked in for the first time with the shirt on, not the first time seeing him to check something out and he's like oh I didn't know you went to martial arts I went to the same you know I was into that too I, I, I went there I went to the same dojo in short I started training him uh, at my house because I, I did that I, I did that privately and um, he would bring me stuff like you know let's do a barter thing instead of paying you you know because I used to get paid for, for a half an hour at a time um, he would like bring a, and I still have it, a box Wawa pedal. And, um, you know, he'd, he'd can well, this, you know, buy a couple of lessons, train the lessons. I'm like, yeah, sure. And then after that, we became, you know, good friends. And uh, he'd come over and uh, we'd hang out. We'd watch TV, MTV, or I'd show him, hey, look, I just got this, this Yamaha bass amp combo. And he'd grab my four string bass guitar and he'd start playing rhythm and lead at the same time on the one guitar and I was like holy crap so he I never really knew how great of a play he was I know 
all Long Island musicians know one another. And I know, I know other people told me he's a real great bass player. And I didn't know until I saw that. And then when he started doing a thing with the band, they were promoting it. And he said, hey, can you come out, you know, to the audience? Come out and be a part of the audience, you know, we want to get a crowd together and I want a lot of familiar faces. I went to saw to see them perform, you know, pretty much this album live and I was like, wow. And then he had a, a segment where he had a bass solo and I'm like, oh, here we go, a, a bass solo, you know, like, like, you know, it doesn't, it, it's a flip of a coin if it's going to work or not, you know, it only works for someone like Stu Ham. It doesn't work for someone like the bass player, you know, uh, uh, Michelangelo, I think it is, from, from uh, Van Halen, in my opinion only, so don't start hating on me in the comments. And he had the solo come out, and he just started put -put -put with the two-hand stuff, and I was like, wow, man. So his whole house was the studio. He called me up one day. He says, I got, I got your, your hero here, Richie Blackmore. Bring your guitar and have him sign it. And I was like, no, I don't want to. I don't know if I spoke about this before. I said, oh, I don't want to do it. I, a lot of people that I know that know him say that you know he's not a, he's not a nice guy. And uh, I wish I did because had I had him sign that guitar, that was my number one custom guitar. That it's an old '70s Strat that I completely, you know, hot rodded. Put a Floyd, uh, um, a um, graphite nut, Spurzel tuners from Bob Spurzel. Um, I had three humbucking pickups. I had coil taps and, and splits on, on all of them. Um, I had the 12 fret up, scalloped. And uh, had I had him sign it, I know I would still have that guitar. I miss it till this day. I see pictures of me with my band with that guitar, and I'm like, oh man. Maybe I'll put a picture up with the. Uh, oh, that, that, that was another band. So that doesn't count. I was in other bands and um, playing bass guitar and sometimes I get behind a drum kit but you know I really just wanted to play guitar and one band I was in they, one guy was leaving we were having a band reunion because we had a bad breakup at one point and uh, they came over to my house in the basement and we, we it was a picture but that wasn't my band but what had happened is <clears throat> Steve said to me he said um, after he, he invited me to his bachelor party I'm leaving a lot of stuff out he asked me to his bachelor party. He was getting married. He, he already had the house, the studio. He was getting married to this, this wonderful woman that, that, you know, he just adored. I remember him coming to my house and we're having dinner and he shows me the ring. He's like, this is the ring. It was, I think he said it was his grandmother's ring or something like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Joni to, to uh, marry me. And I'm like, oh, good for you, dude. So he invited me to his bachelor party and all the heavy hitters from Long Island were there. Anyone that was living on Long Island that was in a band was there. So, um, you know, I came there and uh, to the, to the <laughs> bachelor party with my guitar on my amp and I walked down to this, his basement studio and I put mine next to all and I'm looking up I see like I think seven, eight guys. I, I don't know if I mentioned this before. And I was like, oh my god, I'm like, man, am I out of my league here. <clears throat> And uh, he's introducing me. They're all nice and polite. And, um, you know, we started playing. And, and a couple of guys, I think three or four of them, had guitars with the, you know, the whammy ball on the tremolo on. But they had it facing this way. They weren't even using it. One guy had a Paul Reed Smith. Another guy had, you know, a Fender. Another guy had a Jackson or something like that. Like, these guys, they have a Floyd Rose on the guitar and they're not even using it. So they're going around the room and I got my volume off. And I'm just mimicking what they're doing because I don't read or write music and I'm just trying to see what chords they're at. So I'm just like copying them and, you know, pretending I'm going along. And the one guy who was going around the room and picking out, you know, uh, uh, doing a, a, every, they get a pocket and they go, he'd point to one guy, okay, you go. And then one guy would start doing a solo. And he'd go, then you go. And he did a solo. He's going around the room and I, the guy next to me, it's coming to my turn. So... You know, I was not comfortable with it. So Steve is next to me playing bass, and I just turn my back to Steve. You know, like like we're having a conversation. You know what I mean? And the guy taps me on the shoulder. I turn around. And he says, "Take it." So I said, "Screw it! I'm going to show these guys what the whammy bar is all about." So I had a whammy bar hernia, 
with my guitar, I pulled out all my stunts and, and, and gimmicks and everything that I made up, everything that I copied, everything that I stole from so Steve I and Satriani and, and Jimi Hendrix, I, Eddie Van Halen, I put it all in one and just went crazy. Then I came up and turned off my guitar and like looked at the guy like, okay, you know, like let me pretend to play again and, and, and see what's going on. And everyone was looking at me with their, their drawers dropped and like two or three of them were going, do it again, do it again. I was like, okay, turned up the volume again and just went to town and just hoping that I duplicated whatever I did the first time. Apparently I did. And uh, they all coming up, up to me afterwards saying, wow, that was great. That was, you know, you know, who are you? You know, what's going on? Well, shortly after that, my buddy Steve said to me just what I said about him. He said, you know, every time you come to the store, you, you know, you, you hide in the corner and you play. I'm, I'm, I'm a shy player. And um, so I play really low, and I'm just, you know, I'm just like that. And he says, you need to, you need to start your own band. He says, I got a kid that I train, I teach bass uh, guitar to. He's a teenager. He's a great bass player. He says, and he wants someone, he, he asked me about, you know, who, 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 tra he, who trains me in martial arts. I told him you. I says, and I think that you should take this kid as a student because I never took anyone that was never studied martial arts before. I'm, I basically started training guys um, from a black belt, you know, point of view. Um, and uh, he was like, oh, I don't want to train a kid that doesn't know what he's doing. And he's like, you don't know, well, it, you know, you need a bass player, you need to start your own band. Now that I heard you play, you gotta, you gotta have your own band. So I started training the kid and then uh, he would he would come over. I just had friends that would come over, and other guys I was jamming with, and other people I was in bands with. And he would, and then we would play. And then I met a drummer at my gym that was a trainer, and um, I said to him, "How about coming over? You know, I'm thinking about starting a band up. It's just me and a bass player. The bass player is a kid." And uh, he came over, and that's how back Black and Blue took off. You know, thanks to Steve Palmer. He's the one that said, you need to start a band. I didn't know you could play like that. You got to start doing so. Half of our stuff was all my original tunes that I wrote. And I would teach them how to play it. I'd show the bass player what, how I want him to play it. I'd get behind the kit and show the drummer what I want him to do. Because I hear it in my head. It's like I turned into a radio station. All of a sudden, I heard the whole song. Words, um, music. <clears throat> but because I don't know how to read or write, you know, it's got to be in my head. Um, and that's how we did it. And the other half was cover tunes. And because, you know, my bass player was a Rush guy, so we did Working Man. And my, my drummer was a big Mitch Mitchell fan, so a lot of our cover tunes were Hendrix songs, which I didn't mind all too much about. So that's how that whole thing uh, came upon. My buddy was the one that pushed me into uh, starting my own band. So I don't know how I parlayed into that conversation. I just had these out over there to remind me to put them in the car so I could listen to them. But, um, oh, someone, uh, I got a, a, a comment, a um, couple of comments from people, which I'm blown away by. Uh, they just said, the, you know, you play pretty good. I like, to, I like to see you play. Can you post more videos of you playing? So that's what made me make this video today. But then again, you know, might I digress? I uh, I, I went into a uh, you know <laughs> a long-winded uh, story about my buddy. Long, he's gone now. I miss him dearly, but um, you know, too much great talent we lose too fast in this world. But uh, so, so thanks for watching. Have a good day. And a better tomorrow.